Ayan. Yes, good afternoon. Aming mga kaguro, isang mapagpalang hapon sa bawat isa sa aming mga kaagapay. Siyempre sa inyo rin mga pamilya. Uh, muli ito po si Jambi Santos. At sa hapong ito nagpapasalamat ako kay Ginoong Franco at kay Ginoong Angelo dahil nabigyan nila ako ng pagkakataon na magbahagi sa inyo sa para sa ating module making. Ayan. So para sa part 1, ang ibabahagi ko sa inyo ay yung introduction kumbaga yung foundation of everything else that my other two colleagues will discuss pero bago yan bakit nga ba? bakit, bakit namin to ginagawa? or personally bakit ko to ginagawa? I'd like to share with you my whys una dyan quality education And I'd, I'd like to believe that every teacher, regardless kung public, private, kung preschool teacher or graduate school teacher, ang goal nating lahat is to be able to give quality education. And uh, this endeavor, yung pag-attend ninyo at yung pagbahagi namin is all just part of all of us wanting quality education for our learners. Pangalawa, siguro now, more than ever, mental health. Uh, I, I could just imagine how stressed everyone is. Uh, hindi lang mga guro, pati yung mga magulang, mga mag-aaral, mga government officials, mga school officials. Uh, so, th this pandemic and uh, everything else that goes with it is stressful already for everyone so uh, mahalaga mag-focus tayo on mental health huwag natin kakalimutan yung mental health and we like to think na this way we are able to help na ma-maintain ng mga guro yung mental health and finally uh, when I was ano ba, brainstorming with uh, Sir Franco bago pa niya itaguyod yung kaagapay uh, isa talaga sa gusto kong mangyari ay um, to be able to help teachers who will eventually help others so uh, my hope is after this talk or kahit hindi agad-agad um, kahit isa lang sa inyo sulit na ang siya namang aagapay sa kanyang mga kasamahan so Those are my whys. Okay, let's uh, first discuss concepts. Ito yung mga bagay na kaliwat ka ng binabato ng mga guro, ng mga school officials, ng mga magulang even. Uh, th these terms are all over social media. And uh, very, very possible that ginagamit natin sila interchangeably or mali yung intindi natin, etc. Uh, my goal here is to uh, just simplify things. Okay. So, we, uh, or I'd like to very briefly discuss with you what online learning is. And then we'll also discuss remote learning. Tapos yung online distance learning. Ayan, may mga nagkakabat na ng ulo and uh, yung blended learning. Ayan, apat lang naman. And uh, I promise uh, hindi natin masyadong bibigatan yung discussion natin dito because I am sure that in the past months you may have attended already several uh, webinars about these four or each of these four. Let's start with online learning. Basically when we say online learning or online education, We're talking about education that is internet-based. Okay? Yung ginagamit natin, yung kapangyarihan ng internet para makapagbigay ng edukasyon, para makakuha ng education. Ganun kasimple. Uh, so sir, ibig sabihin, if you're using the internet inside the classroom, that's already online education, exactly. Next remote learning 
Ayan. So, mag-focus tayo dun sa term na remote because um, it implies physical separation. Yung mag-aaral wala sa classroom. Minsan nga, kahit yung guro wala sa classroom. Physically magkahiwalay sila. Okay? Uh, minsan sa magkaibang towns, minsan magkaiba ng city, and quite possibly even countries. So, remote learning. Um, hindi kailangang online. Okay? Kaya katulad nga kita nyo sa pictures, merong uh, parang mga worksheets yung dalawang mag-aaral na sumasagot. So, ah, pwede rin palang uh, hindi online during remote learning. But, we will acknowledge that perhaps online learning during remote learning or the use of online or internet-based education during remote learning is uh, the easiest, most efficient. Okay? Kaya naman, nandiyan yung tinatawag na online distance learning. So, parang combination to nung dalawang nauna na remote learning and online learning. Uh, so, internet-based education employed because of physical separation. Okay? And finally, blended learning. Ito yung uh, naunang ideya na pinaglalaroan ng ating government. Yung sinasabi nila na, o oh, sige, sa una, mag-e-learning muna tayo or online learning muna tayo, online distance learning. And then, pag parang pwede na, then let's go back to the classroom. And then, sabi ni Pangulong Duterte, uh, not until a uh, vaccine is made available. So, basically, blended learning, blend combination to, of internet-based education and traditional classroom interactions. Pag sinabi natin combination, it can be one after the other or pwede rin namang alternating. Okay? May mga gumagamit din ito. Halimbawang, yung mga malalayo, yung binabiyahe nila. Ma, hindi naman pwedeng everyday pupunta ka sa, sa classroom or sa school. So, may days that you attend uh, the, the traditional classroom and then there are days when it's remote learning. At the end of the day, okay, tulad ng sinabi ko kanina yung wise, yung uh, let's say no to stress. Okay? Uh, now that you know what those concepts mean, siguro help in educating the others. Pero kung uh, they use it interchangeably, wag tayong mag, ano, wag tayong mag marunong at mag look down on other people. Yeah, let's let's all say no to stress. Uh, and bilang tulong nga namin sa inyo today and uh, next Saturday, we wish to present to you a certain framework that will hopefully help you in crafting your modules for uh, the upcoming school year. And this framework is the adaptive design learning framework okay uh, ako naman naatasan ako to, to share with you the five principles behind this adaptive design learning okay first principle natin is going to be adaptability ando na sa pangalan di ba adaptive okay we'll discuss that further later second asynchronous over synchronous Third, we have active and interactive learning. Ito naman ay hindi na bago sa atin. Uh, fourth, we have the three C's of online learning. And finally, we have modularity. Okay. Kasi eventually nga, we go into the actual crafting of your modules. Okay. Adaptability. When we say adaptability, we mean it in both design 
and delivery. Pag sinabi nating adaptability, dapat flexible. Kayang magbago. Um, pag may nangyari, makaka-adjust. Okay? Pag hindi natin na-achieve yung gusto nating or yung na-foresee natin when we were planning, hindi na-achieve yun, makaka-adjust pa rin. Okay? Pero ang bottom line nito is we want all of the learners to be able to catch up. Okay? Sabi nga ni ng ating kalihim, no learner left behind. Okay? And uh, this is despite his or her limitations. And limitations would include access to computers, access to internet. Pwede nga may access sa internet, pero iba-iba naman ng lakas. Uh, hindi lahat marunong mag-video. Okay? Hindi lahat may headset, etc. So, the the module that should be uh, crafted for these learners should be adaptable. Okay? Kayang mag-adjust because again, bottom line, no learner left behind. Bawal yung ah wala kang internet, sige, ulit ka na lang ng grade level next school year. Okay? So, yun yung goal natin. Mahirap ba yun? Oo. Posible ba? Posible. Next, asynchronous. Ayan. Yun po pala yung tamang pag-pronounce natin. Asynchronous. Ayan. We favor asynchronous over synchronous um, delivery of learnings, delivery of lessons. Kasi nga, babalik ko ulit tayo dun sa ating uh, naunang concept. May limitations. Tanggapin na natin sa lalo na sa ating bansa okay. and especially if you work in a school that is outside of the city marami talagang limitations okay. and it would be unfair to the learners even the teachers in fact if you require them to do synchronous ibig sabihin ng synchronous sabay sabay kayo so, ito yung mga nagbi-video conferencing, 40 minutes sa isang class, video conferencing. Tapos may susunod na naman na class, video conferencing ulit, etc. E paano na lang kung mahina yung internet ng bata? Wala na. Okay? Or na-disconnect siya. Wala na. So, uh, our modules should favor asynchronous activities. When we say asynchronous, ito yung mga activities that are well planned so much so na pag binigay mo sila sa learner kaya nilang in-navigate yung lesson mo in their own pace. Okay? May mga iba dyan mas mabilis gagawa. May mga iba dyan mas ma... would take their time. Okay? Pero pareho silang makakarating dun sa gusto nating ma-achieve na uh, pagkatuto. Okay, so, learner-based. Uh, sa education process, pinakamahalaga yung learner. Kung mahalaga yung learner, sino ang kailangan mo i-equip? Yung teacher. Okay? Now, this one is really nothing new. Yung active and interactive learning. Okay? Even before COVID, ito ay ini employ na talaga natin. Ito ay hinahanap na natin talaga sa ating mga activity plans. Okay? Kailangan, whatever your lesson is, it should um, engage the students. Kailangan aktibo sila. Hindi lang aktibo. Kailangan may interaction among them. Okay? At mas magiging mas makabuluhan yung learning if it is student-centered. Of course, there will be times when uh, kailangan talaga ng lecture. Okay? But you have to give them the chance to uh, make meaning, to find meaning, to apply whatever it is that they uh, learned for that day. Okay? And kailangan tandaan natin that technology 
is not the point. Okay? Baka akala natin, oh, interactive learning. Oh, kailangan magkaroon ako ng mga interactive na mga uh, websites. Hindi. Okay? Uh, Una-una, alam ko, alam to ng lahat ng teachers, hindi mo kailangan ng computer para maging interactive yung lesson mo. Okay? You, you can make use of the chalkboard and because of how you present it, because of the teacher himself or herself, the lesson is interactive. At the same time, kaya mo rin na kompleto ng gamit, computer, ang bilis ng internet, but still, it's not interactive. Hindi mo pa rin ma-engage yung mga students. Okay? So, simply put, put yourselves in the, ano, in the shoes of the learners. Paano ba nila ito tatanggapin? Okay. Paano sila matututo? How do you think will they interpret this information? Uh, are they interested even? Okay. So, student sent. Ayan. Three C's of online learning. Ito, very interesting. You have content, coach, and community. Again, just like the previous concept, this is not anything new, okay? But you will notice that because we will now be employing online learning, mas exciting siya. Mas, uh, mas nakikita mo, mas mabilis. Halimbawa, content. Okay? Ang mahalaga, ang maganda, dahil online learning tayo, Ayan, tama yan si, si Woody at saka si Buzz. Information is everywhere. Okay? Information is readily available. Okay? Uh, gone are the times when you need to memorize so many things. Okay? Ngayon, uh, nandyan naman yung information. Eh. Ang mas mahalaga, alam mo ba paano hanapin? Alam mo ba paano i-analyze yung information that is available to you. Okay? Hindi na mamahalaga yung teacher, mahalaga pa rin because teachers will now act as coach. Okay? You guide the learners towards the content. You guide them towards uh, the best way to uh, use the content, to apply it in their lives, etc., uh, in the picture, you uh, see uh, a young man and an older man fishing, you know, which reminds us of yung kasabihan na give a man a fish and uh, he uh, will be full for a day or he'll be satisfied for a day. Pero dapat, ang, ang goal natin sa pagtuturo ay we have to teach that person how to fish para on his own kaya na niya does that diminish the role of the teacher of the coach no in fact it amplifies the role of the teacher parang yung ginagawa namin dito sa kaagapay ba ah malulungkot ba ako if after today or after next Saturday, hindi ko na kailangan magturo. Kasi all of you na nakikinig ngayon ay nag-branch out at nagturo din ng mga kaguro ninyo. Hindi. Sobrang saya nun. Okay? That, that would not have diminished me or us, but that would have amplified the effect of uh, what we want to happen. And finally, community. Okay. Ito, let's look at this in two parts. Okay. Everything that we learn or everything that we want our students to learn um, should be used or they should be able to use it to improve whatever community they are in. Be it the family, the barangay, the country, the global community. Okay? At the same time, ang maganda sa online learning, you have access 
to the you know, to, to, to the global community hindi na lang yung katabi mo sa classroom ang pwedeng tumulong sa iyo or ang pwedeng mong tulungan. Okay? Hindi na lang yung mga yung apat limang kaklase mo na nakapaligot nakapalibot sa iyo ang makakatulong mo. But you have everyone in the world who has access to internet na maging katuwang mo. Okay? And finally, modularity okay. um, we propose that when we prepare or deeper propose we believe that the crafting of modules is really the best way or, or the best uh, thing that we can do sa panahon ngayon ng COVID-19 because number one, it is the most convenient. Okay? Uh, bakit siya convenient? Kasi part by part siya. Okay? Ibig sabihin, kung part by part siya, uh, pag nagkaroon ka ng uh, teaching opportunity, okay? uy, pwede ko magamit itong module na to. Sige, gamitin mo na. Okay? They are interchangeable depending on the context. And everything else, and everything will still lead to the greater goal. Okay? It is also efficient, and it is also effective. Hindi ko na masyadong uh, i-discuss yung efficiency and yung effectiveness of modularity kasi yun yung i-discuss po sa atin ni uh, Franco later on. Pero nga, it is quite convenient. So, I've, I've been speaking for the past 20, 21 minutes. I hope, kahit pa paano na nahanda kayo sa i-discuss ng mga kasamahan ko later on. Pero sa panahon ngayon, uh, I, I suggest you go on your health break first. Okay? Huwag natin papabayaan yung ating physical bodies, mental health. Ayan. Kayo rin, when, whenever you uh, find yourselves in your virtual classrooms already. Bigyan nyo yung mga estudyante ng health breaks din. Kailangan din nila yun. And uh, when you return from your health breaks, uh, Franco will be ready for you. Again, this has been Jambi Santos, your kaagapay. Maraming maraming salamat po. And uh, I will see you later during the Q&A. So, thank you.